This video will explain a program using JDBC uh, that is more seriously designed and uh, well written than the basic JDBC program in the previous video. So this program is a simple bank program. It has a server that calls a database that hosts accounts of a bank and it has a client that makes calls to the server. So the server exposes an RMI interface and the client is, is then of course an RMI client. So the program contains both RMI and the JDBC code. The fact is that there is uh, really nothing conceptually new here regarding neither RMI nor JDBC. Everything regarding RMI is ex already explained in the RMI chat program and everything regarding JDBC is already explained in the basic JDBC program. So uh, the contribution of this bank program is to show an appropriate architecture of a program using a database. So the most important thing then are the different layers. So that's what I will start to explain. So the layers on the client side are just the common, the startup that starts the program and the view that presents a command line user interface, the usual non-blocking interpreter user interface. And then there is the common package that contains things used both on client and server. But what's interesting then are the server side layers. So on the server side we first have as before a controller which is also exposed as an RMI remote object just like in the RMI chat program. Then we have the model that contains the state of the program, the program's view of what it is modeling in the reality. For example the accounts, the bank accounts. But the new thing then is that we have this integration layer. So the purpose of the integration layer is to call external systems. It is not the task of the model to call external systems, neither of the controller. The task of the controller is to know to which object to delegate the work. Could be objects in model or in integration. And the task of the model is to model the reality, to be the program's view of the reality. None of those tasks include calling external systems. So therefore we need a new layer for that task and that's the purpose of the integration layer. So whenever we need to call an external system, like for example the database, we need an integration layer. Let's have a look at the integration layer in more detail. So we see that there are two classes, an exception that can be thrown, it is thrown when the database calls fail, and a DAO object. DAO is short for database access object, and it's a common way to call a class whose task is to, to call the database. And such an object, the database access object, should contain all the messy details of the database. It should be the only class in the program that has knowledge about the database, that contains a SQL code and so on. So it provides a facade to the database. It hides all the details of the database and its public methods are adapted to the model and controller, to the needs of the program. Uh, and this uh, design pattern to use such a database access object will make the code in the controller and model very clean. There will be no messy details, no strange method calls and no, no particulars about the database in those layers. All that is encapsulated in the DAO, in the integration layer. So now let's have a look at this database access object. First there is the constructor which contains code very similar to the basic JDBC program. We have a private method that creates the database and a private method that prepares statements. And then they work exactly the same way as the create table and the prepare statements methods in the basic JDBC program. So I will not look further into them here. Uh, then there are methods corresponding to the needs of the controller and the model. For example, somewhere in the program there is the need to find an account by specifying the name of the account holder. Then we write such a method in the DAO. So this method takes uh, uh, the name of an account holder and returns an account object. Uh, so that's exactly the need of, the, of some code somewhere in the program and, and that's exactly what this method does then. And then all the database details are hidden inside this method so they are not exposed to the controller or model. And the code in here, well there's nothing new. It's the same as in the basic JDBC program. We have prepared a statement, find account statement. It is prepared uh, in the prepare statement uh, way down at the bottom here. Just like in basic JDBC. Set the parameters and uh, execute the statement. And then uh, iterate through the result set 
there should be only one line in, in this result set because the holder name is the primary key of the account table so there can be only one such account one row with this holder name okay so if, if we found it return an account object representing that account and if we do not find it return null and the other methods are similar the method signatures the names parameters and return values are adapted to the needs of controller and model layers and the content is uh, all the messy details of database calls to fulfill the promise of the method to implement what is promised by the signature so all database particularity is hidden inside the methods of the DAO object so here's an object to find all accounts it will execute a prepared statement that returns all, recount, all accounts then uh, iterate through that result set and uh, create an account object for each of the found accounts and add those objects in a list of account objects and then return that list and create account create that creates an account and the delete account that deletes an account and update account that changes the state of an account regarding uh, controller and model I will only show that there is no database specific code there yeah so um, no database related code here just calls to the methods in in the bank DAO imagine all the SQL handling of the bank DAO mixed in here in the controller code it will make the controller messy because then the controller would be doing things that are not really its tasks it would have low cohesion uh, it would do unrelated things so it would be diff difficult to maintain but thanks to the well-defined methods of the DAO code is nice and clean here and in the model Uh, the model consists just of the account and a few exceptions. The account uh, just holds logic for handling an account, deposit and withdraw. And uh, when the state of the account has changed, it just calls BankDB to synchronize its new state with the database, again using the appropriate method in the bank DAO. So no database calls in here. Coming back to the controller, we can see that all methods are synchronized. Uh, and that is needed because there might be multiple clients accessing the controller simultaneously and um, that might call a race condition uh, we could for example imagine two persons uh, trying to deposit money at the same time overwriting each other's results or one person trying to deposit and another person trying to read the state of that uh, account and uh, getting some invalid state in the middle of the, the depositing okay so we we need to make them synchronized and that is terrible it's a very bad practice actually it is a bit wrong of me to say we need to make them synchronized the, these methods are synchronized to provide an easy example and to show you that there is the risk of race condition but it is wrong way to solve this and there will be a better way in in the next video where we use an OR mapping framework because actually what happens when these methods are synchronized are that only one client at a time can access the server so here, here we have a client well we have more than one client of course there are many clients uh, and they are all calling making network calls using RMI to call the server over the network and on the server side the controller has exposed the uh, RMI interface the controller is an RMI remote object but all methods in the controller are synchronized so that means only one client at a time can enter the controller the other clients will be waiting in a queue so if one client is uh, executing inside the controller the other client will be stuck in the queue and only when this client exits can the uh, next client enter the controller so no multi-threaded server here doesn't mat matter how many threads we have and there are threads inside the RMI runtime but they are useless because only one of them can execute in the server at the same time the other just others are just waiting actually you should be very reluctant to synchronize a, a multi-threaded server and if you do you should do it with utter care really think about what you synchronize and as little as possible and write the code wisely so that only very small parts are synchronized here everything is synchronized so what to do instead instead we should use transaction handling transaction management is the tool of a server to handle the problem with race conditions from multiple clients so without going into details of different locking strategies and read write locks and optimistic and pessimistic locking and so on I'll just say that 
the very task of a transaction engine is to handle race conditions in as an efficient way as possible. Transaction manager of the server should be able to handle race conditions both in the Java code and in the database and the state in the Java code and the state in the database should be kept consistent and, and this is not something we are supposed to write on our own it's com quite complicated code and also it's infrastructure code and as has been said previously we should not write such code our own the transaction management will be very similar between different applications so it means we should use an existing transaction manager and in this rather simple JDBC example I have chosen not to do that so there is no transaction management and instead we have the terrible synchronized but in the next video on the JPA bank where we use JPA instead of JDBC to access the database there will be transaction management and it is in fact easier to use with JPA than with JDBC it will require only a few method calls and that is because as we will see in the next video JPA is, is a much more powerful way to access the database perhaps more complicated but also more powerful so then there is just one more thing I want to explain in this program uh, that is in the common package the account DTO what does the acronym DTO mean it means data transfer object so a data transfer object is a class that has no behavior but just contains data and is used to transfer data either between different nodes in the network or between different layers in the same node so in this example the DTO is just an interface it extends serializable because it is going to be sent as a parameter over RMI what does it contain this interface it contains a read-only view of an account in the bank it has getters but no setters or no business logic methods like the deposit and withdraw so there's no method here that can change the state of, of the account only methods that can read the state of the account and the thing is we don't want the wrong object in the wrong layer to update the account uh, assume for example that the client needs to read the state of an account it wants to list account holder and balance so it uh, executes the list command which arrives in the controller on the server side the controller calls the integration layer and the bank DAO object the DAO object calls the database and the state of the account is returned to the DAO which wraps that state in an account object and returns it to the controller and the controller then returns the account object to the client but what if the client now by mistake calls deposit on that account this account that was returned okay the balance of the account will uh, change and the client will not see an error but it will never be, be synchronized to the database the state uh, the new state of the account will be lost instead the deposit must only be called by the controller because then on the server side the new state the new balance of the account will be synchronized to the database that is why we need the read-only view provided by the account DTO interface now the database uh, can return the state of the account to the DAO the DAO wraps the state in an account object returns that to the controller but the controller when it returns this object returns it as an account DTO object and the account DTO has only getters so now there is not the risk that the client calls a deposit because the DTO does not provide the deposit method so let's look at this in the code so first we can see that the uh, account object in the model implements the, the DTO interface provides the uh, getter methods so this means that an account object is also an account DTO object so the account class this class implements the account DTO interface so that means that an object of the account class is also an object of the account DTO interface so then let's look in the integration layer in the DAO let's look at the uh, find account by name method this method searches in the database then uh, creates an account object to hold the result of the database search and then returns that object so it returns an account object but then when we arrive at the controller that called that method it returns what was returned by that method and that is an account object but it is returned as an account DTO so the caller of this method which is the client will only know that it gets an account DTO and then when we look in the client 
for example when the balance command is given that is supposed to display the balance of the specified account the thing that is returned by this get account method in the, the controller so bank is the controller the remote rmi object the account is stored in acct and we see that acct is an account dto so now the uh, client can only call the getters for example get balance as here it cannot call deposit or withdraw now you might of course argue that the client could cast the account DTO object to an account and call the deposit or withdraw method because it actually got an account object and that is true of course but all this thing with the DTO it's not meant to be a security thing that should stop an attacker from doing something illegal to the account it's some it's, it's meant to help the programmers not to accidentally call deposit or withdraw in the wrong place so those were all the interesting parts of the bank JDBC program now it remains only to run the program. Uh, first let's start the database. So there it's running and the database used by this program is bank and it has no username or password. Uh, let's look in the account table. So there are two accounts left from previous executions of the program, FIA and Ulle. Let's start the server. It started, then let's start the client. First there is the help command that lists all available commands. Let's start by listing. So those were the two we saw in the database. Then we can, for example, create a new account. Now there are three accounts and we can check the balance of an account. And we can deposit. <laughs> not the known balance but the balance of the account like that um, and we can delete an account are those all the commands yeah withdraw also works, works the same way as um, deposit okay that's it